Hello and welcome everyone to XCOM 2 War of the Chosen. My name is Saiken and this is a new series which I call Saving Your Disastrous or Fully Completely Almost Finished Campaigns. And the way it works is you are sending me the save games that you failed, your failed runs, the ones that uh, are unwinnable and I will see if I can salvage at least parts of it and get it back on track to send it back to you <laughs> in the hopes of you finishing the campaign. Um, whilst I'm doing that, we all together learn a little bit about XCOM 2 and what to do and what to not do. I think the beautiful part about this is XCOM 2 uh, and the campaigns that I'm uh, uh, receiving are so typical of what most of the players go through that um, it will just be a great example. So, the person that has given me this campaign, the anonymous uh, donator, uh, is playing on Legendary Iron Man, so hardest difficulty. And I know that uh, he has already 100 plus runs, at least that's what I'm seeing from the safe games. I'm not sure if uh, he has um, actually made a single run on Legendary Iron Man, but I can see that there are a couple of repetitive mistakes in uh, the uh, save games. I've chosen this one here because it is quite representative and uh, actually one of the worst uh, uh, campaigns, so it's going to be rather hard to recover from it. And my message in the whole campaign, in this whole saving the campaign mode will be don't give up, keep on fighting. Um, and make the right decisions. The way that Legendary works, any difficulty in XCOM is there is enough room for error, there is a margin for error uh, being built in. You just need to make sure that you're actually um, that you're actually continuing the game um, and try to avoid the little small mistakes. The reason why I uh, could run Legendary Iron Man with four uh, persons and ballistic weapons only, like without weapon upgrades and without uh, squad upgrades, is the game actually, if you're reducing your mistakes to almost none, you can beat the game on the highest difficulty without any upgrades. Um, and that is how much leeway is uh, in there. Clearly, the more mistakes you make, the more, uh, more difficult it becomes. So, without further ado, let's uh, look into uh, the Memorial of the Fallen. It tells a little bit about the run. I mean, I can only speculate, but here we go, right? Um, lost a couple of uh, important soldiers early. And then you see uh, almost a couple of campaigns where here and here, uh, he was uh, always losing two soldiers in the same campaign. Fair enough, um, it's a rookie here and a rookie here, so he seems to be sacrificing the rookies. But then again, why would you put a rookie on a mission in the first place? I, uh, it clearly shows there are way too many uh, lost soldiers. And then there is this big, huge campaign with three corporals just being lost in Operation Spectral De uh, Death. Not exactly sure what uh, happened here. We are seeing that two um, Reapers are being lost. And if you take a look at the actual soldiers, this here is a Grenadier uh, that died. That's a Sniper uh, that uh, died. That's another Grenadier that died. I mean, I've looked through all, uh, through most of them and I can already fast forward. There's only one Ranger in here. The rest are almost all Grenadiers or Snipers. So that immediately rose a couple of uh, questions. Uh, if there is no um, specialist in here on the wall of the fallen that means he needs to have a lot of high uh, uh, high level specialists but that's not the case if you look at the roster you can see that all of the specialists are still squaddies which means he's not playing with the class uh, which in my opinion immediately is uh, another red flag right there so we're going th shortly through Maybe a couple of these uh, over, classes, we should take this ship specifically the soldier abilities. Planets. And you can see uh, that his snipers are going more into the uh, classical sniper direction. That's fine and good. His ranger is a phantom ranger. That's also, uh, also okay. So no huge mistakes uh, made so far. But I think where was uh, the... Um, where was the specialist? I think he had like one 
specialist. No, he didn't. Well, in another safe game, he had a specialist which was only combat, um, uh, combat uh, uh, skilled. Which I think your biggest uh, problem, uh, man, is you need to uh, keep your troops alive. And if that means you're uh, specking into healing, then so be it. Um, so learning number one, get, an, get a well-rounded team. Don't ignore just one class because on paper it looks like a support class. Actually, specialists are one of the best, if not the most powerful standard class that you could get. Mm. Next up, if we look at uh, his history of what he um, researched, um, we are uh, seeing he went directly into faceless autopsies to get um, to get mimic beacon, and that is oh that I wouldn't do that. It's like below par to do so because you need three faceless corpses in order to actually pull it off. So. Instead of that, I would have suggested um, to go with a standard research at the beginning. The second thing that he did is he basically started with uh, uh, sectoids and psionics and tried to rush psionic just to find out, surprise, surprise, that he ran out of Elarium. So not only did he not have psionics, he's also missing crucial, crucial research um, like resistance communication, um, officers, autopsy, uh, hybrid materials for armor, and he just barely is at magnetic weapons. Mind you that we're talking about month number three, okay? Almost, um, uh, almost done. We had March, April, May. So we're looking at five more days and then month number three is over. So we're going into month number four, which means he, we're going to be in a hell lot of a uh, uh, problem because we have no soldiers, we have no armor, and we have no weapon upgrades. And that is usually a sign of you having two less scientists falling completely behind the curve um, and also making crucial, crucial mistakes in, in your research. As for this uh, here, Gorilla Tactics School, Resistance Ring, also fit is fine. I think he bought the infirmary to mm, to increase the healing rate and make sure that people are actually coming back. But uh, th that's okay. Um, I would pro I would probably have gone for a training center instead. But fair enough. Um, in here, he's now building the power relay and is clearing um, alien debris to get in uh, down there faster. Uh, which brings me to the question, where the heck is this false um, engineer? That's one here, one here. Okay, I see. Well, healing rate plus 100 is good because we are actually having a lot of casualties. Mm. Looking at the globe, just to look at the situation here as well, let's learn something out of the situation. Now, if you look at the uh, this situation, he has one area in month number three. Apparently, a lot of uh, options uh, here, but he cannot even contact other areas because he haven't, hasn't yet uh, researched um, the network. Which, again, psionics do not offer you anything. You're losing out on so many supplies. And mind you, we're looking at three more bleeps and then the game is almost over. And you can't even counter that with uh, the Advent Black side because you can't make contact. So the only thing, that, uh, the only uh, way that you can actually lose XCOM 2 is via the Avatar project. And in order to prevent that from happening, you need to focus all of your efforts in making sure that the Avatar project is not happening. Three bleeps can fill up very, very fast. Let's look at the dark events. Yeah, well, look right here, major breakthrough. That's two bleeps right there, and it will happen in two weeks. So before he has his laser uh, rifles, uh, the, uh, the whole entire bar will be filled. And that's when he has the last month before actually losing the game. And I would not even let the Doom Timer tick down. I would immediately counter it. So we're, we're definitely trying our best here, guys. But it's going. Uh, I'm, I'm telling you right now, this campaign is pretty much in a very, very bad spot. 
So we're starting with um, changing our research to resistance communications. One of the things that many people misunderstand here is if you are looking uh, for uh, for the research tree, please also consider how many days it'll take. If something takes two or three days, right, uh, you might want to chuck in a couple of these uh, basic uh, projects before going for 28 days magnet magnetic weapons or even 36 days psionics, which he had done. <laughs> so if you, I'm sorry, I'm a bit under the weather. If if you uh, are trying to rush psionics, that's all fine and dandy, but psionic rush actually means go for uh, um, magnetic weapons, go for um, power armor, and uh, or for the first armor upgrade, and then go for psionics. It doesn't mean go for psionics right away. Next up, let's work with the soldiers real quick. So one of the things uh, that I'm doing uh, and he will need to accept it in in the safe game is i'm actually going to change the color of most of these guys because i want to see on the battlefield like right away what i'm dealing with uh, i'm usually choosing green for the specialists uh, red for rangers white for snipers and yellow for grenadiers that way it is super easy to see where a unit stands and makes my life incredibly easy. Also it looks pretty fly if they all have these white jumpsuits. Good. So the next thing after uh, actually setting the color scheme, that's a rookie. That's another rookie. The next thing after setting this color scheme is we want to make sure that we get the right classes. If you have a roster, as a rule of thumb, you want to have an equal amount of classes. We have five grenadiers, one ranger, two snipers and three specialists. So we're going to train rangers and we're going to train snipers So and, and specialists. So hopefully uh, this guy has done so. No, he decides for yet another Grenadier training, that is wrong. You want to go for a Ranger training because that's the class you're currently missing, buddy. Good. Next up, <coughs> and this is where it's going to be spicy, let's consider our odds and let's see what we really need to do or what we could do. We've confirmed the position of the soldier being held captive by the chosen. So we have the option to get a soldier, a skirmisher. Um, that's an optional rescue mission to get Praetor Mox back because he had been captured, right? It's an easy way, or a relatively easy way, to gain some experience. We could use our two corporals and a specialist, which is probably the best team that we could field at the moment. We could also try to kind of get them with our rookies, but no, 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 no. Let's try to field our best team and in case uh, things go south, we we're just going to abort. So right away, let's make all the utility items available and see what he has in terms of um, what he had prepared in terms of um, equipment. So he only has a smoke grenade and uh, there's actually no excuse for not having proper items. So let's go into the building part. He has zero med kits, he has zero flashbangs and he only has uh, Psy uh, M's, which again don't help him at the moment. So one med kit, one flashbang. Gosh, the music is a little bit loud. Give me a sec. I mean, I like the uh, music, but let's turn it down just one notch.
We finally got a lead on where the chosen have been holding our soldiers. So as I was saying, it's time we get him out. We need to probably edit these uh, guys, right? So the only PCS that we do have is a mobility PCS, which our ranger should get. There we go. <coughs> Moving on. What kind of weapon upgrades are available? There is an advanced scope, which is very good for a sniper. <coughs> Let's see if he has any other weapons. He just has a weapon with a stock. <coughs> Excuse me. Wow. So we're going with the advanced scope, of course. Um, as a part of as a part of that. By the way, these here are the new alternative weapons that I just unlocked with uh, the Legacy runs. Just a different cosmetic setup. I like this one here. It's actually, it looks cooler, way cooler. So this is our sniper. Next up, let's take a look at the loadout. We are going to use the traditional sword, liking it. And as a shotgun, I mean, it's either the old world assault rifle or the old, old world shotgun. I like the old world shotgun, it looks badass. Really well done. But to be honest, um, I'd rather take one of the new shotguns and give it the hair trigger that I've seen. Yep, there we go. And last but not least, we need some healing. For her, we can use one of the old world assault rifles. That's a, pl that's a plus five aim upgrade. I think that's not too bad. So we're going to have a solid aim with all of the soldiers. Yeah, that's our three man team, guys. Uh, that is exactly whom we're using in order to get uh, Praetor Mox back. Plus one soldier. Plus hopefully get these guys a bit more experience so we can level them up. Here we go. Sky Ranger deployed. In position for deployment. Alright, got myself some water. Let's do this. We've confirmed that the soldier taken captive during our previous operation is being held within a high security advent facility not far from your position. If we try to take them back by force, it won't be long before we're totally outnumbered by enemy reinforcements. Mm -hmm. Our best bet is to go in quietly, drawing as little attention as possible. Which means, don't fight and run out of the mission as soon as possible. We're not only going to be outnumbered, we're specifically going to be outgunned. I can already see that that's going to be a very hard mission. So super tender, tender loving care. We don't have any timer on this mission. 
which means you have all the necessary time in the world. The latest intel has our operative being held in the main structure just ahead. We have the advantage of stealth here, so we should try to get in and out as quietly as possible. So we're moving up. The enemy spots us. This is going to get a whole lot harder. Security level currently is one. The security level indicates their um, <coughs> their range of vision. So if the security level is low, they have no reason to be suspicious. And as we sneak by, we should not we should not uh, trigger any alarm. We have Firebrand on standby for evac, Commander. But as soon as she gets in range, the whole compound will go on high alert. Now, we should hold back unless looking at him being basically in a building emergency. here, you can already see the outlines. Well, what I would want to do, what's going to be our tactic here, is move around the compound. Take the outer parameter. Location confirmed. And bypass most of the other Morning. stuff. Some of these guys have plus one armor. Makes me wonder. Is he playing with uh, permanent dark events? And if so, why didn't he counter the plus one armor thing? Specifically, if uh, there was no weapon upgrade. Stepping off. Plus one armor with the ballistic weapons that we're currently having. That's a pretty, pretty nasty thing. Lucky for us, this guy is not expecting us to be here. Looks like hostiles over here. Let's do this. Moving up. Copy that. And as you can see, we are moving along. The, f uh, the fence. I am not yet sure where we would want to position ourselves and how quote unquote sneaky we want to get uh, them out of there. This is currently open. Perfect opportunity for us to just move in and take uh, the the prisoner. Move over here. We've got an enemy squad here. Yeah, I figured there would be more. So one of the things I'd like to do is basically moving up here. <coughs> Sorry. And then it depend once we we get him, the AVAC zone is either here or over here. And from the rooftop you can just take the fastest path there. I guess that's a huge advantage. Target position now. Copy that. The highest movement range is with the sniper, uh, with the assault, which is why I would <coughs> actually send him in to get uh, to get uh, Praetor Mox. That's another 
uh, patrol. Eyes on a hostile patrol. Carefully moving in. Their detection radius is still very low. On it. <coughs> so <coughs> Oh my god. I don't know what this cuffing is about. Wow. So, as I was saying, we're trying to get the cell, and in order to do so, Double I would time. actually like to move everyone up. We can hack the cell from up there, and we can take him out in one turn. So we're moving over. This door wouldn't be open. Um, so it's only one patrol that we need to really worry about. Confirmed. Got it covered. <clears throat> we know that the patrol is down here. It's probably moving. Ah, shit. I was hoping it would be moving away. Well, one way of dealing with them is also we could kill the three of them and then open the cell. So far we haven't added any additional enemy. Killing them fast could mean... Killing them fast could mean we are actually up for, for a good run. Like this year, for instance, very solid shot, 100% hit. Might want to break um, the concealment. Yeah, let's do that. We're going to start with killing them and extracting uh, next turn. He only sees these two. The ranger is deliberately positioned at the other side. So we can use the high ground bonus. He does know that we're here. And this here actually should be a pretty solid crit. Is he taking a shot or is he just saying I'm busted? Alright, he's taking a shot. Very good. good Infiltrating their system. <clears throat> so, income from the region increased by 25%. Uh, we don't want to bypass the lock, so might as well just increase the region's income. That's okay. I'll take it. Free supplies are always good. We only have one region. Firebrand is in position and the compound is on full alert. Time to move. Time to move it is. Moving.
These here are going to be problematic over time. They will, will add up. They put out a distress signal and we're already picking up multiple inbound transports. Moving in. Confirmed. We're probably going to trigger another pack. We've got the VIP in tow. Moving to evac. Carry the unit. Yes, please. Okay, that's good, that's good. We are going to double move with our sniper. Got it, moving. This here will trigger. This here is probably the best uh, pure um, pure cover spot, but this here might be closer to the exit. Out. And I'm still having the very slight hope that we're not going to trigger anything. Triggering a tower. Giving ourselves a protocol. That increases our cover to full cover. I've got eyes on Advent troops. All right, two Advent troopers. That's fine. We're now at security level ten. Which is, on the other hand, not fine anymore. And that's where we're getting some additional packs. That was to be expected. Running to the evac field. And evacing out. Got it. We're running to the evac field. And evacing out. Just in time. Moving into cover. Concealing ourselves. And actually just waiting because next turn we can get out of here and whilst we are concealed they can't attack us. So they will double move and maybe an uh, overwatch, most likely not. Trying to figure out where we have gone to. This guy blocked the stairs like a dumbass. That's pretty clean cut, first mission. So what's the learning here? Um, I did not want to um, gun down many enemies because currently it is important that we're flawlessing the missions. The mission itself gives you enough experience, you don't need to have kills. Good, that's the first mission, down with Advent. It was 
wasn't easy, but Mox has been safely returned, Commander. He's eager to get back into the fight. Okay, so learning number one. We need medical protocol. Let's give her a medical protocol. Perfect, by the way. Gremlins can heal with a medical protocol using her actual med pack. Plus, they get a bonus charge. So she will have two charges, which is great. Got an extra hit point. That's also a wonderful. I am glad to return to your service, Commander. And we got Prato. Forget what you and your soldiers have done for me. Efficiently executed and no casualties. You can lead the Reapers any day, Commander. Well done. Well, thank you. Trying my best. Had a bit of an unlucky streak beforehand, but now we're catching up. Okay, so I can see your team is already forming here. Need another uh, we don't have to grenadier. The council this here could be our prime team. With the spokesman lurking in the shadows. Good. Let's try to salvage as much as we can with the rest of this here. This is the headquarters of the skirmisher faction. They may look like Advent, but they sure don't act like it. Now that we've established contact, we can scan at this location to gain additional support for our cause. Well, that's great. You know them as they were, the soldiers of Ad Commander. I believe it is time that we meet. I am Betos, first of the freed Advent. Any shredded attack does an additional plus one shred to the target. That's beautiful. Great all marks with me to our cause, but she believes. Our people's freedom in this alliance. In so you, we can get a facility lead here in eight days, which is great. The game recognizes that we're pretty, uh, pretty much at the end of the line. So it offers us facility leads, probably facilities standing right here or somewhere next year. So we're going to take that. I'm keeping the intel because we need to make contact. UFO contact has us locked in. We have to take evasive wow. maneuvers. Wow. Okay. This is even more fucked than I would have uh, thought. For the West African sector. Redford, come on. We're in the clear, Commander. No further sign of the pursuing UFO. Wow. Redford, for the very, very first time in the entire career of Redford, he evaded the UFO. Thanks to Clever Flying, we have managed to evade the UFO. Well, in which case, Setting let's get some intel. <clears throat> because clearly the UFO had been at the other location. Power relay now operational. So we got some more power, that's fine. You know what? Let's try to clean this here and get a training facility up as soon as possible. We're okay on supplies, so I think we're. I want to get another resistance order slot because we need bony, and resistance orders are actually pretty decent uh, bony. Let's double check which ones we could theoretically get. I think here we go. So we took supplies collected are increased by ten percent. Uh, he failed to take resistance contacts. Well, that's okay. He did not make any contact. Covert actions will not be ambushed. Um, you know what? These are not so hot. But since we can take anyone, uh, any of them, it's actually fine. And this here is pretty, pretty good. So supply plus 10%. And XCOM does an additional one per target. This here is worth investing a bit but yeah 10% extra 
uh, from the supply drops isn't that massive at the moment. So let's save the money instead. I re reconsider it. There we go, I told you. Commander, it's gonna happen. Let's continue to make progress on the Avatar project. If we're going to slow them down, we'll need to move fast. Before the month end, let's double check what we could buy. I see the aid of those traitorous dogs. Market is open. So we could buy a couple of faster researches. The specialist would help us a lot, but 110 intel is unfortunately more than we can um, afford at the moment. We need 80 for the next uh, for the next um, for the next area. Advanced perception is pretty good. It's not superior perception, but. We are okay on Intel, that would reduce us to 90. Advanced Perception is actually really good for a sniper. I think we're going to invest in this. Um, at the moment, our soldiers are underleveled. And one way of dealing with that is to make sure that they're actually hitting. So, since our sniper Sharpshooter here, Sergeant is the highest uh, one. He doesn't even have a personal combat sim. Alright, 8M aim is 10% increase, so that is a lot. A lot. And we're going to give him a proper weapon, and then this guy is going to lead our team. Love it. It's pretty good. So there is the supply drop and uh, this gives me some information as of what he fucked up. He failed the guerrilla operations mission, he failed the landed UFO, he failed uh, stopping the avatar progress, and he failed countering dark events. So that was a really bad month. The game gives you plus 10 percent oh no that's from the resistance order but the game even on the lower level uh, difficulties uh, tends to try to give you the resources okay. that you need all of my efforts have been rewarded i am reinvigorated things are becoming clear yeah well I now she now increased her training that's wonderful this here is going to happen in one week, uh, which means we definitely need to stop it. New alien facility constructed in one week. Oh my god, that's not going to end well. Let's increase the shredder, because that's super helpful. Yeah, and that's pretty much what we can do. The skirmishers are yours. Um, we're going to get some money. Oh no, 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 wait a second, there's the UFO still. I'm not doing that crap again. We all know what's going to happen. Don't test our luck. Because that could mean that the campaign is going to end. These findings will likely prove crucial to our ongoing efforts, Commander. So, resistance communications and resistance radios, we are definitely going to use that. This here allows us to get um, uh, the modular bullops immediately. Well, here's the thing. Um, it increases the weapon of the skirmisher. At the cost of us running 10 days again behind the curve. At that point in the game, drop your um, collect, uh, collector attitude. You don't need to have every breakthrough. We need to have magnetic weapons very, very soon. 
So that's our next huge um, target. The admin officer autopsy may be an option. Hybrid materials definitely an option afterwards. But let's go with the magnetic weapons first. Is eager to begin, command. And let's see if we can somewhat speed up the process, right? Commander. We can now work to establish contact with local resistance groups operating out of regions around the globe. Once we've collected sufficient intel to make looking at the black market, we need to scan the target region for the operative signal. Market is open. Yeah, this here would have been really, really good, but it would have only uh, helped us to uh, to save six days. It is what it is. We are not having it. Our intel is too low. We need to make contact, and it'll take us six to eight days, and we maybe will be ambushed by the UFO, but having a major breakthrough soon and a new facility coming up means we have really no choice other than to go through with it. There you go, that's the new facility. They were promising it. So there is a uh, there is a scientist. We need to get this guy, and there is 76 intel, which we need to get as well. That's a very very crucial mission at the moment. Cannot fail it. Super important. So let's launch it and make sure that we're successful on that mission. Good luck. But that is going to happen in our next episode of Saving Your Campaign. My name is Saiken, and that was. Um, our first iteration of it. Uh, we're going to see each other in the follow-up campaign. See you later.